Hi, this is Peter Godinis, your ambassador, kdytv.com. Good morning, Oxnard. And we have the privilege of having Daniel Chavez, who is a contributor to our programming. And our subject we want to talk about is making the city of Oxnard just a great place to live. And there are yes. many things going on in our community. But two things, Daniel, as you know, are the recall and the redistricting. And from you know your viewpoint, from your generation, your background, we would love to get your point of view and maybe educate our audience in regards to those two subjects. So with that, can you give us a little bit of your thought in regards to the recall that we're gonna potentially be having here? Of this course. Year? Um, so the city of Oxnard will be having its recall election on May 1st. Um, this was brought about um, some decisions that were made by the city council in regards to the wastewater rates. Um, in November 2016, the residents of Oxnard, 72% of the voters voted to repeal the excessive rates of um, the wastewater. So it was this whole process that came about of um, the city council not really listening to the residents and their voice, um, especially when you know myself and others always say, let your voice be heard, you know, vote. And they did, and obviously this was the result of that. So the recall election is something that is targeting four of the five council members. And um, the four council members will have an opportunity to pretty much try to defend their seats, um, but they're gonna be individuals that challenge them. Mm -hmm. um, so three of the four their terms are up this November mm -hmm. in 2018. So whoever replaces them or if they keep their seats, they're only going to have it for a few months and then they'll have to run for re-election if they say choose. Um, the most Oscar Madrigal, our newest council member, um, his term isn't up until 2020. Mm -hmm. So whoever challenges him, um, they won't have to run for re-election until 2020. Mm -hmm. Which now I'm going to shift into the whole district election Redistrict. process okay. um, because the recall plays into that um, and these two go hand in hand um, so as many people may be aware or they may not be aware was that the city of Oxnard was served a letter of intent uh, pending lawsuit if unless the city took a, the approach of actually exploring district elections. Mm -hmm. um, somebody felt that the city of Oxnard was violating the California Voters' Rights Act, or CVRA. And um, the CVRA, just very briefly, was designed in order to help those protected classes, the minority communities that weren't being represented on the city council. Um, <coughs> months before, we heard the city of Ventura had got served with that letter. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The difference between Ventura and Oxnard is that Ventura has seven members and they all happen to be Caucasian, mm -hmm. um, whereas the city of Oxnard over the years have always had different types mm -hmm. of individuals. Run. More diversity. More diversity, exactly. So the city of Oxnard has been going through this process. Normally it's only about three public hearings that they do, but the city of Oxnard felt it was necessary to take it a step further. So we're actually had in a total of uh, six or seven public hearings to try to really engage the public and have them understand. So with the recall election and the district election, um, whoever runs for Councilman Madrigal's seat or if he retains the seat, he will continue to be a considered at-large council member mm -hmm. and not be affected by the November uh, 2018 election. Mm -hmm. um, the goal behind it is to try to get more representation throughout the entire city. Um, as somebody that grew up in South Oxnard and continues to live in South Oxnard, um, I can honestly say when I speak to my fellow community members in South Oxnard, we feel disconnected from the city. Mm -hmm. So, but there's also those pros and cons when you deal with the district election. Um, we already feel disconnected from South Oxnard and North Oxnard. We already feel disconnected. And with district elections, you kind of breaking it down even more. And of course, there's those challenges and those fears of, well, if we're breaking it down even more, we're going to have our city divided even more. And 
it's human nature to want to protect your own. Mm -hmm. Because now when we move into district elections, you're not really focusing on the greater good of the entire city. You're kind of focusing on those people that have got to vote for you. It's like you say, natural tendency to lean towards that way. Exactly. Okay. Um, of course, my opinion is that anybody that gets involved in a city council seat or um, during the election process for districting, you need to have the the idea to want to do better for the entire city, mm -hmm. um, not just your area. Of course, be a voice, be an advocate for your area, mm -hmm. but you need to do what's best for the entire city. Mm -hmm. um, so my personal opinion, it's still very torn um, when it comes to districts. Um, I see the pros of it being more representation, the cons that you know we, do, we break up our city. Mm -hmm. um, but residents are going to have that opportunity to select somebody that's going to represent them and be their advocate on the city council. Um, so it sounds like our city council is going to grow by two members. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have seven on the dais with the mayor continue to be at large. I know there has been a few questions where people ask, well, what about the mayor? What district is the mayor going to be in? Well, the mayor is going to be, continue to be at large. So mm -hmm. everybody gets to vote for the mayor. Mm -hmm. That's only... very educational in terms of wondering how people knew about that. Yes. And not a lot of people know about that. There though. you go. So that's the information right there is that the mayor will continue to be at large, that everybody gets to have a say who is ultimately the figurehead of our city because mm -hmm. our mayor doesn't run our city. That's our city manager. Our city manager is the one that runs the city. And the council is the only one that gives direction as to how we want our city to um, look and the path that we wanted to travel in, and that's the city manager's job to carry that out. Um, so, district elections, it, again, I'm very torn on it. I'm glad to see that more representation, but the fear that I have is that if nobody runs from South Oxnard, what happens to that district? Um, in 2016, I ran for city council. Right. I was the only city council candidate from South Oxnard. Mm -hmm. so, those are the fears that I have if I get put into another district right. with an incumbent, now what happens to those two See districts in South Oxnard? So that's a fear of mine. Um, but if it works out great and we get people that actually want to step up, then I think we'll be in really good hands. Yeah, and it just says to, to wrap it up, as I interview people, I see the key things in terms of how we treat one another uh, trying to see other people's point of view as best can. It was a good point that you said it's a natural tendency to want yeah. to support, you know, your own community, but learning how to step outside that. And, you know, I, I'm not a uh, fortune teller, but there is going to be a recall election. Yes. Uh, there is going to be a redistricting. It's a reality. Mm -hmm. I hope we're all on the same page that basically says we're all going to be better for it. Yeah. And such is with a name like Oxnard, you have to be great. Of course, and, and one last thing, with, when it comes to the recall, you know, whether you're for it or you're against it, support the candidate that you feel is going to be go. the best one, there you, go. you know, because that's your voice. And if you don't want to recall anyone, but then later on complaining why we have all these problems, you have no there's, one to blame There's that yourself. behavior, and that's a, of course. <laughs> Daniel, thank you so much. Much success. Thank Please you. continue to take care of that wonderful family that you have. Oh, yes, it's and, growing. Uh, I know that's, that's your motivation. That's a whole different segment, Daniel. Yeah. So with that, Peter Godinez, KDY-TV, good morning, Oxnard. Until next time.